I'm Carl Taylor. And I'm Urs Reicher, hello. And welcome to another Broncolor how-to video. Exactly. Carl, you set up a big diffuser and above the diffuser, softbox, white panels left and right, looks yes. like a super soft diffused lighting. Yes, I'm trying to create a scene that looks like um, a designer, uh, a designer's desk in their mm -hmm. workplace. Uh, the set that I've got here has sort of technical drawings and um, plans and drawings for different types of spectacles and glasses, plastic color chip samples, all the sort of things that a designer who might design these glasses would have on his working studio desk. Okay. Now, often in these working studio environments, it's overhead lighting and uh, it's kind of soft and flat to give them a nice clean area. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've tried to replicate here, but this is not really the shot that I want to take. Okay. Um, what I wanted to do with this particular how-to was demonstrate how effective Braun color modifiers are at changing mood and emotion. Absolutely. So we do the same set with two different, completely different lighting. Exactly. So we're going to go from this very uh, sort of bright and broad technicians looking lighting desk mm -hmm. to a very much more emotional, early morning, moody, dramatic okay. shot by introducing something that looks like early morning sunlight coming through the window of the office Good. rather than the office illumination. But I thought I'd set this up first Good. so we can do a direct comparison between one lighting setup and another lighting okay. setup. A uh, quick overview on this one. Yes, what absolutely. Did you How you did it? Uh, well, quite simple. We've got this, uh, as you say, very large diffuser. I've got the, the camera coming in on the stand just to get uh, a, a plan view overhead. And uh, I have two lights. And the reason I've got two lights is these little plastic chips are, are, are glossy and I'm able to ca uh, catch the reflection of this light in these chips and this uh, pair of glasses, and I'm able to catch the reflection in the glossy plastic here from the other right. light. So okay. just by moving the two lights around, we can affect which parts of glossy plastic catch right. the light. Okay. And then by changing the height of the lights above the diffusion kind of spreads it out a little bit okay. more. So it's on, on my left, it's a bare bulb, and here is the softbox. Quick yes. word about that. Um, well, just simply on this side, I wanted the lighting just to be a little bit softer and wider to spread into more of this area. Okay. It was a little bit concentrated before, so the softbox helped diffuse uh, a little bit further. And then what I see as well is a mirror, additionally. Yes, uh, I was having a little bit of problem here. I like to bring the eye into the picture from the left-hand side, from the lower left. And this corner piece of the plastic of the glasses was dark. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking this mirror, which is taking right. light from okay. here, bouncing into the mirror and giving me just a patch of light in that corner okay. of the glasses. Just a little highlight there. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll show you uh, the shot with each light independently and we'll cover the mirror to show oh, what the mirror is doing yeah, as good. well. Let's just take one of them okay, off. Okay, so it's the bear. Yep, and we'll let the power adjust. And let's take that shot. So in this shot, you can see that the illumination is on the left-hand side of the glasses and on those color chips on the left. And if we swap to the other light now. Yep, done, You're ready. And we look on this shot and on that light, you'll see that all of the lighting oh, yeah. is okay. on the plastic so on that, this side. So that's why you can't make it with one only light. Exactly. Okay. You'd have to put it central and then you wouldn't get any glow here or here. Yeah. So the two lights, you can even add more, two, three two if more necessary. Of lights, yeah. Exactly. So if we go back to both lights yeah. on at the same on. time, and that gives us the glow back in <coughs> here. Okay, so we'll just take the mirror away now and let our viewers see this little detail we're talking about okay. just on this corner of the glasses here. And we'll see without the mirror, we lose that little patch of light down there, which you see is necessary. Oh, right. Okay, exactly. that just adds a nice little catch light. So that's it for a very clean, simple sort of designer's desk look. But now I want to change, change it, it completely, completely different atmosphere and demonstrate how different lighting modifiers okay. can change the mood. Super interesting, yeah.
this looks nice and a lot different than before. Yes, yeah. The main light is a fluter with yellow gel and it's very far away. Yeah, as you know, obviously inverse square law, if we have a light too close, we're gonna have a lot of bright intensity here and then the exposure will be falling off very quickly. Right. But if we move our light far away, then the exposure transition is much more gradual so okay. it uh, would basically look more similar to sunlight, which is what we're trying to do. Right. We know that the, with the sun being so far away from the earth, there is effectively no fall off of light. It's Absolutely, kind of yeah. equal. So we need to replicate that because what I wanted to do here was change from that very technical, bland, flat lighting mm -hmm. to something a little bit more dramatic and emotional um, in that sense. So. Yes. We're going with an early morning or late evening sunlight and the designer has left his tools and things on the desk. We've potentially got some sunlight breaking through a window, potentially even through some curtains or something like mm -hmm. that. And as you can see, I've added in some gels and as well as the yellow and orange gel on the fluter to create the warmth of sunlight, we've just got these mild sort of um, magenta -y gels here either side with a little gap between so the orange light is coming through the middle creating mm -hmm. a shaft of light to emphasize the products and then a little bit of pinkiness light which looks kind of delicate and uh, it's a little bit fantasial right. yeah. either side so we kind of concentrate yeah. that beam there and i so, think it was very interesting to see because the, the fluter has a certain size so it's not a point light source which is always hard so you played with the distance of the filters to the setup. The closer Absolutely. you get, the sharper we have these uh, these shadows, or yep. let's say the, the, the color shifting. Yes, absolutely. And if you take them further away, closer to the flute, they will be softer again. Yeah, so they, you can adjust this very exactly, precisely with did, the distance. Yeah, they diffused out more. We messed around moving them back and forth and found this to be about the right distance yep. where this feathering was, was just about right. Um, there is one other important uh, light, which we're going to demonstrate in a second. And that's actually just what I call a sort of global illumination fill mm -hmm. light. Uh, but let's take the shot first with just the fluter. So at the moment, it's a one light setup and I'll just capture that image first. So okay. as you can see here, we have the warm light from the fluter and we have the uh, gels either side that we just spoke mm -hmm. about. But what, what we look at, when I look at this picture, the problem for me with it is it's too dark and threatening, the shadows are too deep. And to again, to make it a little bit more romantic and actually a little bit more realistic, as you know, quite often in the shadows with natural light, we're getting blueness in yeah, the shadows. Yeah. So I've added another light over here, and that light is bare bulb. Obviously we make bare bulb, make sure that the subject cannot see the bare bulb yeah, so it doesn't yeah. cast shadow. So I've got it pretty much above it. And I've just made a little custom made blue gel, which wraps around the bare bulb and goes over the top. Okay, um, just a word about the modding light up there. Absolutely. It's a plastic uh, wrap around, uh, around the bulb. So keep your modeling light off, otherwise it's going to melt. Exactly, um, and it blocks as well the air circulation up there completely, so yeah. uh, modeling light is an absolute no-go if you do something like that. Yeah, totally. So no modeling light, but it's okay for a burst Absolutely. of flash. Yeah. And it's just a mild blue gel, but it will make a huge, huge difference to this shot. Um, so let's just put that light number two. So we are now at just a simple two light setup, and we take the shot and there'll be a dramatic difference there. Yeah. And it almost, it, it makes the, 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 the magenta, the pinky even a little bit more beautiful by adding a bit of blue in there. But the key thing is the amount of blue it brings exactly, into these in the shadows, shadows, which makes it look a lot more natural mm -hmm. than that. Uh, and that's the sort of final uh, mood and feeling yeah. I wanted to get in the shot. And I think the interesting thing about this is that if we take that shot, it's exactly the same yeah. set, exactly the same model, but a completely different feeling to the shot from this shot. Yeah. So it just shows how we can use bronze color modifiers and different modifiers yeah. to create different mood and different drama. Yeah. Just one idea about the, the, the fill in light, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense and it's almost the, uh, the only way to fill in a scene like this because we have a dominant shadow from the main light. Mm -hmm. And even if we have something soft, like a soft box, we would immediately 
get like a secondary shadow, yeah, obviously in a, uh, in yeah, a different directional, direction. Yeah. So this light is even softer than the biggest soft box because it's uh, completely diffused. So it does not create any secondary shadow at all. Exactly. So it's that's not coming from any particular direction. It's coming from every everywhere, direction. Yeah, exactly. yeah, so, so that's so perfect. Yeah. yeah. So no, I'm happy with that. And uh, as I say, I think it's a, a good demonstration on how we can use brown color modifiers to change atmosphere exactly, and yeah. mood. Wonderful, no, great result. Okay, I'm Carl Taylor. And I'm Urs Recho. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.